I always felt very comfortable in front of the camera. And then um, back at home, there was this musical band that was very successful, uh, not only in Puerto Rico, but all over Latin America. And they were from Puerto Rico. And I said, oh, you know what, Dad? I would like to audition for them. And my dad was like, are you sure? Yes, I want to, definitely. And to make a long story short, in 1984, I became part of this band. And, and, and ever since, it's been nonstop. For me, it was all about waking up early, doing interviews, doing a show, feeling that energy, that adrenaline, and then going to sleep and, and doing the same thing, you know, next day in another city. I missed my family a lot. I would just call home bawling, saying, I miss you, I miss you. Uh, up to a moment that my mom said, okay, no problem. If you miss us, we'll cancel the, the contract and you come with us because I can't stand seeing you like this. And then I said, no, no, hold on a second. <laughs> Next day she would call me back to say, are you doing, how are you feeling today? I'm fine, I'm fine, everything is cool. So, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed music. I, I enjoy um, working with people from different parts of the world and and actually working with kids from different parts of the world with different realities in mind um, gave me a lot of balance, I think. So happy I was leaving the band. <laughs> it was time for me to move on. Uh, I started in 1984 and I left the band in 1989 and, and I, was, I was tired. I, I, I wanted to take some time off to just do nothing, you know? It was, it was a lot of work. And, uh, and so in, in 1989, I decided to go home and finish my you know, high school. And, uh, and six months later, I hopped on a plane again. And I left, I went to New York City. I was 17 years old. I just wanted to get lost in a city, you know? There was a moment that I said, I don't want to be part of the music business or the show business ever again. Uh, but that only lasted for six months, you know, when, when then I got tired of doing nothing. And one day I picked up the phone, I called some friends in Mexico City and I said, what are you guys doing? I'm, I'm, I'm visiting. This was on a Friday, uh, on a Wednesday. That Friday I flew to Mexico City. Uh, that Saturday I, I went to see a, a a, a show, a theater show, and uh, and next Friday, I was already debuting in in this play. So it was a musical play, the one that I was part of in Mexico City, and then uh, some uh, producers, TV producers, came to the show and they wanted to do uh, a musical show, but for television. And they auditioned me, and and I got the part. I was the the vocalist for the uh, main song of, of this TV show and the record company showed up. Do you really want to sing? And I'm like, yes. And uh, six months later, I was releasing my first solo album. Yeah, it was radical. Uh, the change was, was drastic. Um, but I wanted to try something different. And, uh, and so I did, I went and I did General Hospital. It was full-time acting. Five years, excuse me, three years of, um, of waking up every day at six o'clock in the morning and, and showing up to a studio. And the routine was what made it so difficult for me. Um, and then the same thing with General Hospital. After three years, I said, okay, I loved it. It's time to move on. I, I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot of you know great acting techniques, and you know doing the show. But once again, I ne I needed the reaction of the audience. Then I I recorded uh, another Spanish album, did really well in Latin America. But we started crossing over into Europe after recording the album Welve, and uh, and seeing the reaction of of the audience in non-Hispanic countries. I said, well, you know what, you know, language is not an issue. At that time, I had, I've already had the opportunity to record in Portuguese. We did some things in Italian, even Filipino, in, in Tagalog. And uh, why not English, I said. You know, let's, let's give it a try. The record company is very open to that idea. And, but with the album Vuelve, I started doing Spanglish versions of the songs that were becoming a hit uh, globally. For example, The Cup of Life, 
the original name is La Copa de la Vida, and and it was the official anthem for the uh, World Cup in France in 1998, and uh, and it was number one in 38, 40 countries, and and. Okay, let's do something in English then. It was a very special e evening, and I knew that I was performing in front of the entire industry. Um, but I was ready to go on vacation right after that performance. And that was just a thought. <laughs> that lasted for two minutes after the show because of, you know, the, the standing ovation and everything. And, and then right after the show, I, had to, I hopped on a plane and I went to Italy to do the San Remo Festival, so I, I had no idea what had, what happened that night. Uh, and and my, that morning in Italy, my manager tells me, you have a phone call, and who is it? Madonna. Oh, how cool. Two hours later, you have a phone call. And it was another legend, you know? So I said, well, something, we're doing something good because, you know, I'm being recognized by people that I respect and that I admire, that I've admired for many, many years. And that's when the record company said, okay, 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 let's do the English album now. <laughs> Imagine what it was like to, um, to release a press release and, and, uh, and the concert on sale today, and five minutes later, 60 concerts were sold out. Uh, I was enjoying it, but at the same time, I was a little bit in, in this automatic mode of, of let's go, 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 nonstop, nonstop. Let's, you know, okay, they're sold out, open 60 more. And, uh, and this is what we've been working for for many years. Uh, I was already tired, though, but I was seduced by, once again, the applause. I was seduced by the adrenaline. I was seduced by the industry telling you, you're good, you're good. And the reaction of the audience was amazing, it was very positive, you know? Uh, the album became four times platinum in, in less than three weeks. It was. It was beautiful, and this is something that I will, you know, have with me forever. You know, I will die, and I just have to think about those days, and I'll say, you know, you, you know, it's good. <laughs> you know, hopefully, if, if a journalist decides to write a book about music, music history, I'll be part of it. You know, I stop for a second to really see and think about my emotions. Um, I looked at where I was coming from. I looked at where I was at that specific moment, and I, and I also took a look at where I wanted to go, musically speaking. And I said, we've done great things, but we have to stop for a second, because if not every decision that I take from now on, uh, if, if it's not analyzed, um, standing in a very, uh, uh, in, a, in a healthy, spiritual place, could become very auto-destructive. And, uh, and I, I needed to go back home and, and spend time with my family and friends and, and just play with my dogs and, and travel without thinking about a schedule. And I don't know when the light, you know, when I had that awakening. I, I was probably on stage. As a matter of fact, I know. I was on stage and I was bored. I was not... Once again, I was not enchanted by, by what someone is supposed to feel when you're in front of 30,000 people performing. When I told my, my managers and, and my, you know, my team, you know what, guys, it's time to go home now and everything, you know, they were like, what are you talking about? No, no, it's, you know, I think it's time for me to, you know, just go home for a while and I miss my dogs. <laughs> and everybody said, well, okay. Well, no problem. And it's, it was the healthiest decision that I've ever... As a matter of fact, I think it's the only decision that I was taking at the moment that was not based on fear. Uh, I was really sure about what I wanted. For a moment, I thought, okay, this is it. I've done enough. But that thought only lasted two minutes because I started building a recording studio. <laughs> and, uh, and it was so beautiful to 
to dare to feel. It was like, okay, we have to write about what you're feeling right now. How can you be intimate with 30,000 people on stage and not be intimate with a piece of paper? Just dare to write about what you're feeling and turn it into music. So I, I built my recording studio and, and I started working with very young people, people that have never had the opportunity to express themselves musically, people that were daring just and so hungry to, to create sounds and just dare, period. And, uh, but it wasn't something that I had to do. I was doing it because I wanted to. And, uh, and I would, you I mean, I would start working on a track and when things weren't flowing, I would stop and I would go on the holidays and, and two, three weeks later, I would come back and let me hear that again. At this, get rid of this. The creative process of this album was so organic, was so natural, was so not painful. One day I was sitting at home and uh, a colleague, friend of mine, calls me and tells me, Ricky, come on, man, you have to check this out. I go, where are you, man? I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm in India. Come and check this out. Uh, what, what are you working on? I'm working in an orphanage. So I, I hopped on a plane a day later and I traveled to Calcutta and I, and I, and I enter this building full of love. Uh, for some months, they had been rescuing girls from the streets that were about to become prostitutes. And, and I'm like, what, do you, what is this? This is not real. This is, and they said, you know what? This is, this is something that is happening all over the world. This, is, this doesn't happen only in India. It happens everywhere. It happens back at home. And I'm like, no, 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 you have to be. So I started educating myself about child trafficking. And, uh, and, I, and, and the numbers and t statistics that I read about were really alarming. And I said, are we talking about an industry that generates 20 billion pounds every year and their mission is to rape children, force them into prostitution, into pornography? and no one is talking about this? How come no one is talking about this? Well, because this is organized crime. What, what do you mean? So um, I, I became very stubborn about it. And um, because I saw it with my eyes, I talked to the victims. I talked to the victims while they were at it and once they were rehabilitated. And uh, you know, it was very overwhelming, but I said, you know what, I think, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I think that music is only a tool. Let's, let's just think that music is, is the perfect tool for me to talk on their behalf. And, um, and I started knocking on doors and I went to the UN <laughs> and I went to, you know, I started in Latin America, but then I went to the, U to the U.S. government and I talked to senators and Congress people and a lot of activists. And, uh, and then I became a UNICEF ambassador and, and it's been beautiful. It's, right now it's all about um, awareness because people don't know that this is going on, you know? First of all, the album is called Life because in my sabbatical I dealt with life and with death. And I was trying to look for the difference, excuse me, the similarities instead of the differences in everything that was going, that was surrounding me. Um, um, from emotions to, to cultures, I was, instead of focusing on the differences of cultures, let's focus on the similarities of cultures. Let's focus on what, on the things that make us smile and the things that make us dance and the things that, and, uh, and it's called life because I literally, I just let life happen smoothly without fear. And it was great to be lost in the process.